we're going to use trigonometric functions to model situations. And trigonometric functions are useful in periodic situations where we need to model things that repeat themselves. Let's take a look at harmonic motion, simple harmonic motion, a mass on a spring moving up and down. A mass on a spring is pulled down five inches below its level when it's at rest. It takes three seconds to make a complete cycle. Let's write the equation for the simple harmonic motion of the mass. Well, since it oscillates, we're going to use trigonometric functions, and why not use sine? It's kind of the most widely used of the trigonometric functions to model periodic phenomena. So the amplitude A and the vertical shift D. Since the mass oscillates between plus and minus 5 inches from its rest level, amplitude is going to be the absolute value of 5 or 5. It isn't removed from its normal midline, so there is no phase shift. There is no vertical shift. Now, since the mass oscillates once every three seconds, really the period is already right there for you because it takes three seconds to make a complete cycle from all the way down to all the way up and back to its middle position. Its frequency, well, frequency is one divided by the period, and that's going to be one-third of a cycle per second because it's one divided by three. And sometimes frequency is used instead of period depending on the application. Since the period we know is 2 pi divided by b, that second term in the sinusoidal equation, we can find b by manipulating that equation since we know p, b is equal to 2 pi divided by p. That b term is going to be 2 pi divided by 3. And finally, the phase shift is going to be 0 since we're really given no other further information about it. So what's our equation? In the end, our equation is going to be 5, because amplitude is 5, times the sine of 2 pi divided by 3 times t. So t is the time in seconds since the initial movement, the mass. So that's our final equation, v equals 5 sine 2 pi divided by 3t. Let's move on to talk about sound wave motions. And I'm going to play a note for you, and that note is A440, and it's the first a note above middle C. And you can hear it there. Often that's a tone bands will tune to to make sure all their instruments are in tune. So let's assume a tone is played in an amplitude of 75 dB. And by the way, that A440, the 440 actually stands for the frequency of the sine wave that's generated by that tone. Write the equation for the sound wave generated by the tone. Well, we're told that the amplitude is 75 decibels. That's the volume level, essentially, of the tone. And the frequency is 440 cycles per second. Frequency is the reciprocal of period. 440 is equal to 1 divided by the P, so the period is actually 1 440th of a second. If you were to really look at the, the wave generated by A440, you would see that it makes a complete cycle in 1 440th of a second. So period is also equal to 2 pi over b in the equation we're going to generate. So b is equal to 2 pi over p. Therefore, b is equal to 2 pi divided by 1 440th, which is 880 pi. And there's no phase shift, assuming the note is all played at the beginning of our cycle. Now, when you have a multiple band members and they're not all playing the exact same note at the exact same time, those waves can start to add to each other and cancel each other out, and that's when we get sounds that are not pleasing to our ear. So in the end, the equation for the sound wave in the form A sine BT minus C plus D is equal to 75, the amplitude, times sine 880 pi T, which is the period. Let's move on to another application everywhere around us, and that's electrical current. Alternating current uses a sine wave in the voltage of the electricity that is supplied. Now, a typical electrical outlet in your house is sinusoidal, and it oscillates between negative 165 and 165 volts with a frequency of 60 cycles per second. Let's make an equation for that. Since it oscillates, once again, we're going to use that sine function. The amplitude A Volt varies between plus or minus 165 volts, so the amplitude is the absolute value of that, or 165. There is no vertical shift in this case. The period, well, we're told that it oscillates 60 cycles per second, so therefore it makes one period in 1 one sixtieth of a second. Since the period 1 sixtieth is equal to 2 pi times b, 
We're going to solve for b, and we're going to get 2 pi divided by 1 60th is 120 pi. And there is no phase shift here, so the final equation here, 165 sine of 120 pi t, where t is the time in seconds. That's the voltage that's generated by the alternating current in your house. Last thing we're going to look at is an economics application. Let's assume an economist consulted by an employment agency looked at the demand for employment in central Illinois and found that it can be modeled by the function that you see here, 4.3 times the sine of 0.82 t plus 0.3 all plus 7.3, where t is the time in years since January of 2010. Well, let's interpret this function. Well, the vertical shift has vertical shift in it. Vertical shift, 7.3. That's the midline of the demand per week, and it's at 7,300 job applications per week. Amplitude, 4.3. That means the demand moves up and down from midline by as much as 4,300 applications per week. So at its maximum, they're going to add to each other, and you'll have 11,600 applications per week, and at its minimum, you'll have 7,300 minus 4,300, or about 3,000 jobs per week. The period, we're going to look at that B term to find the period. The period's 2 pi divided by B. 2 pi divided by 0.82 is 7.66 years to make a complete cycle of this job application demand curve. And finally, there is phase shift on this one, and we get the phase shift by looking at this entire thing. It's going to be C over B. Now, it is going to be a left-hand phase shift because that's a positive number there. It's going to be 0.3 divided by 0.82, so it's shifted 0.37 years to the left. And this is where the sine cycle actually begins at 7300. So that was a look at four applications of trigonometric functions. Hopefully you're more comfortable now with how to model trigonometric functions and how to apply them.